Okay, so I just want to add one um, one final comment to that little series of short you know, cell phone won't let you do more than a minute long uh, takes. So, but I, I wanted to I wanted to say that um, when I was walking back home after the three little videos I just posted, uh, I passed the guy that um, was also stopped with me along on the street, and they started you know asking for his information and at that time they said okay you can go and so then I went and made those three little videos and I passed him and he was sitting on his porch um, on his steps uh, also <laughs> making recording or talking to somebody on his cell phone and I you know I said hey we looked at each other like you know <laughs> what a drag right uh, and I overheard his comment to whatever, whoever he was talking to or whatever he was saying. And it sounded something like, um, uh, you know, and he's, I, I suppose it sounded like he was being empathetic towards the police. He was saying, you know, these are hard times and uh, I, it, like he understood what happened. And I was instantly running through my head what because before I ran into him I thought of uh, making another recording a little video uh, and include him I didn't know he was gonna be on the, I, I didn't know he was talking I saw him sitting first and so as I was approaching him I was thinking um, I wanted to ask him uh, if he felt intimidated or afraid when the police pulled him over. I kind of knew what he was going to say, and that's why I, I had the idea of recording that. Because I know that uh, that same question made to an, a typical average American would have caused like apprehension before saying anything, uh, not say anything sensible, but before saying anything constructive you know like they were repressing wanting to say damn pigs or something you know something that they can't really say comfortably but it would not have been a comment of empathy for sure <laughs> i know that you know if you may, have you asked any americans to say you know, some of course you know the ones that believe the the whole fairy tale narrative of of the hero, <laughs> hero fireman, high hero police officer that they teach you to believe in when you're in grammar school, right? But <laughs> these are not the people that actually have been uh, snagged in and, and and chewed through the system and the you know the uh, mistreatment or the they haven't gotten enough exposure uh, to see the arrogance, the, mean, the the viciousness, the cruelty, and then what really goes on in jail and changes that whole paradigm, changes that, not paradigm, but becomes later paradigm, changes that whole fairy tale narrative into the, the reality underneath of what uh, American citizens are living in, in um, under the boot of uh, of this arrogant, oppressive, uh, brutal, often murderous uh, police institution and, and cruel and human judicial system to where Americans typically, on average, would not just so comfortably be supportive like this guy was. I mean, you have both camps. Like if you go speak to somebody of some, some, some young drug addict in Rome, I'm sure they would have nothing good to say about the police, but the proportions of the, the general sentiment, what defines the cultural personality in Italy is like this guy that was sitting on the steps. He would, or like me, where I wasn't afraid. I was just, hey, I know I live here. I gave him my name and I was smoking a cigarette. Actually, I didn't stop smoking my cigarette. In America, you know, you probably would have looked to see what, you, what to do with a cigarette, you know. Um, and I wanted to post that. I wanted to record him. I wanted to make a little short video of him answering and then make a comment like of, of this nature. Uh, but he was on the phone. He was busy, you know. So um, I just wanted to say, you know, the importance of 
of a respectful human um, a police institution, judicial institution that really is on the side of the people and not looks at the people as the enemy, like at a war, you know, like like they're in, in Vietnam and they have to ambush and lie and, and, you know, and that whole mentality of secret cameras and, and all this stuff that gets exported culturally. That's the big tragedy that we're, we're ruining what is still good in many countries because of this mentality. Uh, but what it produces is what I, what I want to underline is that what you have is a population of half, uh, half the population of a country that is uh, repressing a trauma or has disdain or contempt in reality, but they're afraid to express it uh, towards their police institution, their judicial system. And that means a lack of respect. And that means a lack of support. I mean, for example, um, if a president just like Trump would have won um, in a European country, the presidency, we would have never outla uh, they would have never like um, gotten on the on uh, un un uh, universally all comedy shows and all actors and all of Hollywood just raking on him and 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 um, <laughs> I'm certainly not a Trump supporter, but there's this repressed child in the American population that no longer has respect for government. Uh, they're lying, they're corrupt, they have too much power, and it all starts in that catalyst, which is the contact, the police, the firemen, and, and, and these institutions, but particularly the police, are like the, 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 the finger that extends from, from uh, that makes contact with the people, from government to the people. They are the representatives, they have to be on the side of government, and yet, and yet they're of the people. They're suppo you're supposed to be a citizen that wants to be a police officer. So you come from the people. But then in the States, there's this, this, there's this critical transition position. There's this threshold. It happens in all countries. I'm not saying that German police or, or uh, Argentinian or Italian or um, whatever police are human and of the people in America, they're not. No, this is something that happens to all cultures, all civilizations. Once they put that gun in their holster and they have to find the uh, the, the, the villains in, among this, the people, they tend to stand on a platform of conducive or with tendency to uh, have arrogance or belittlement of the citizenship. They, are, they came from the people, but they, there is that, that, that uh, potential, that tendency. And different cultures, different countries um, describe that place differently. You have countries where, you know, for example, uh, you see countries where the police are just relaxed and the and the, the kid gets pulled over and continues to play with the ball or smoke the cigarette and and or or I've seen police I've seen people like talk back and shout at the police while they're doing their job and they have to still give show them their ID but they are like talking back with anger like you would you know about the situation and why should I do that and and the police don't take it like uh, oh yeah how dare you talk to me that way now I'm gonna show you who's the boss and like also pushes him against the wall and and arrests them just to be vindictive, you know. All that doesn't happen in a lot of countries. So there is a, uh, it's a, how much is on what, how much, what percentage is on what. So this is a really important discourse in sociology and, and nationhood. Um, uh, the better, it's, a, it's like this relationship reflects the, um, the the how can I say this the relation the the rapport between citizenship and government. If if you ruin that uh, point of contact, if the police mistreat and abuse the citizenship, you will in few generations have a citizenship that gets split. It gets divided into those people that. That are religious and of the right and do everything, uh, you know, uh, um, 
status quo and so forth. And then you'll have like a growing number of people that just resent uh, the abuse of power. So what you want is a country that uh, ideally the people, the police really don't want to be in a position, really wish they didn't have to be, you know what I mean? That's kind of like the sentiment that should prevail. They should, if they can avoid like harming or scaring or intimidating or complicating the life of the citizenship, that's what they really want. And that's the country you really want, because that means that that will be a people that has more honor, respect, uh, maturity towards government, towards other people. But the more you, it's like the excessive bullying, you know, achieving parent that demands unrealistically from their kids is completely disconnected with their reality. Um, creates for rebellion instead of respect and unity in the family. Um, they don't understand their kids and then it's just a disaster. It's just this total dysfunction all the way around. It's the same analogy. You have these families where um, there is this, this, this facade of of um, like, I'm, I keep thinking of the Menendez, <laughs> the Menendez case, you know, where these, on the outside, um, the father and the, the mother, Kitty, you know, they, they presented themselves a certain way to the world and to society, like winners and achievers. But in reality, the way that the, the real relationship that was going on with their kids was horrible and to the, and detached and unrealistically demanding, uh, uh, cold and what have, who knows and there was also uh, there was also um, sexual uh, what, what do you call it um, violation I'm getting my languages mixed up um, women to me too movement or sexual abuse uh, sexual abuse towards the kids um, going on and it resulted in you know, and these kids, it's, it's an extreme. They just really wanted to be that, which the parents were projecting, but they could not, they never grew it inside of them because it wasn't nurtured. It wasn't truly fostered in their soul, in their hearts. They were, the opposite was fostered in their upbringing. And so they ended up killing their parents. Um, the stresses, the tensions in American society are, are, are just, in, you know, right now, People are kept so so detached, and government is so big and so out of reach that these uh, tensions are not developing. Uh, but you know, it's that's not a good thing. It just means that we're really dumb as a people. We have no, we feel we have no uh, repercussion or uh, consequence or not transcend. We don't really extend ourselves into government. We are like a herd of sheep, and so kept numb that way is not exactly, um, you know, that the fact that the that we're not responding the way these dynamics would cause, like in other societies, for example, as soon as government, police, institution becomes abusive towards the people, there is a, a natural social condition that immediately provokes the Menendez syndrome, you know, people act up and they protest and they march. Now, in, in America, we've quietly been honing, honing, made it difficult for people to protest, difficult for people to march, they get used to being complacent because there's nothing you can do anyways. And so it's it's horrible. We're being pushed down and, uh, and still um, it's never enough because it is not a stable situation. Otherwise, the police would relax. It's an unstable situation because it, it seems to bring out the temptation for more abuse, more police brutality, more, which really is talking about a lack of um, a lack of connection. They don't long. They no longer know who their people are. They can't walk like the the police that just pulled me over. They they needed to. You know, see, they needed to uh, uh, frame the my uh, what I was in in the Italian society and the Italian culture. I'm uh, an immigrant. He asked me if I was of Italian origin. You know, there was a human conversation. 
uh, the police in America no longer know. They don't care to know. They, they, don't, they can't look at somebody and with a few questions or without any questions, kind of understand where they come from, what part of the country, what possible immigration. No, they're all either Latino or black or they're just anonymous characters and caricatures where uh, no longer, there's no longer uh, that, um, the police are no longer uh, an extension of the people. They're in some kind of, in their own category. And therefore, the, the worst of human nature starts getting, because there's a resentment. When we are split, like brothers and sisters that are forced, that love each other, but are forced to uh, not like each other or live apart and grow up differently, there's a resentment that appears. And that happens, that is happening to America. In a sense, there's anger because we're disunited. We're supposed to be one country, but you're the enemy. So this doesn't have any any stable recognition in the human psyche. And so there's there's uh, all these other forces start erupting, like erupting, like their frustrations get vented onto citizens, onto their own people. Uh, it's just such a huge subject. I wouldn't even, um, I wish I had, you know, I wish I had studied sociology and philosophy and a bunch of things so I could have a more uh, a better uh, language for articulating what I'm experiencing. But um, moments like, like this, which only I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm turning it into this, actually it was nothing. The guy that was also pulled over was like continued smoking a cigarette and talking to somebody on the phone. But to me, it touched on something that I know is not healed still. I still, if I went back to America and it happened to me when I traveled, um, from Hawaii, I went to, I came to Italy, I went to Argentina, and, and so I had to go through, I was trying to avoid the states, literally, but I had to stop in Dallas and Philadelphia and Miami a few times, and so immediately I saw it come up in me, it's like, I look at the police and I get frozen, like, it's like they're looking to see who they can mess with, who they can, whose life they can grab, and, 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 and I'm trying to avoid um, cussing, screw around with. Um, and that that is actually coming from me, I realize, uh, to a great extent. And I know that it's also not for a, a vast number, thousands and thousands, if not millions of Americans as well. But I also recognize that uh, the part of me is just my own still uh, um, festering trauma of, of just seeing how they will play with words and, and get off on being sadistic and all this stuff that traumatizes. If I'm traumatized, I know there are millions of Americans that are traumatized. Uh, I know there are millions of Americans that have seen or thousands or hundreds of thousands of Americans that have visited enough, um, you know, county jails or what have you, holding cells to see. I mean, my first experience, I remember going into uh, the station in West Hollywood, and I was completely, my first experiences at police, you know, there was a little sign, a little piece of paper uh, taped on the glass to be, to, towards, to be read towards the person being held in the, in the holding cell. Uh, in other words, there was a little note written, not for them to, remind, to be reminded of anything, but for people in the, in the holding cell to see across the glass, that said rats with an exclamation. Now, anybody could have gone into that holding cell. A girl, a, a 19 year old girl that first, you know, that was maybe, that did nothing, that would never do anything wrong or bad or horrible to society, but ended up going to that holding cell. And she has to read, you know, things like that. I mean, they really see the, um, that the enemy is found among the people, among the citizen, and they act and they, they have, got to uh, um, settle and, and, and reconcile that in their psychology and they have to um, explain it, in other words, by through arrogance, because that's the only way you can, it could make sense that they're better, that, you know, they do things right, they live, you know, and you know, I've had arguments with police where you think it comes up, the things they say back at you, tell it, the things they say to you, tell you how they view themselves and others and it's like you know did you did you cross did you ever jaywalk well i'm not one i would i'm one that would never jaywalk you are a jaywalker so you're 
you're the enemy. You know, it's like they think they're better. And a lot of countries, that split has not occurred. Uh, you know, the police officer, even though he's got this, you know, job that maybe he wouldn't wish on others, uh, and some sort of authoritative job, he still is able to talk with people like I would fart also, I would also jaywalk, you know, and you get that, you get a sense of that when you're talking to them and you can relax. There's no fear. There's just, you can, there's more uh, uh, aptitude. Now, and then the people to see that they're just doing their job, like the guy that I, I just passed on the way home was commenting on the phone. Um, and I know that in America, there's a, a whole class of people that are also the equivalent of that. But like I said, they are people who have not been exposed and also perhaps of how they carry themselves because they, they you know, like I remember when, when you first have a clean record that they can't find like warrants or unpaid tickets or, or times that you, days that you've been arrested or you've been booked. Once you have that history, you become a different category to the police, right? And likewise, those people that aren't that category yet will get treated better by the police. So they, they will attest that, uh, no, you're just, you know, they're, 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 the, they're the people that you see on, on news networks that they, they put their hand on their heart and they, they, they salute the fallen of firemen and the fallen police and their duty and, and all these anchor people that, you know, make it give you this honky dory fairy tale narrative of America, you know, those people actually exist among the citizenship, but they're not the people who have gone, uh, who have acquired the experience to see really uh, beneath uh, the facade, beneath the, behind, uh, behind the facade, in other words, what is really, and for, to know what really happens and to describe the truth about what is really happening in this area of the country, you have to acquire the experience. You have to have gone through, you know, in and out of jail a few times, and to be able to see uh, the cruelty, the injustice, the inhumanity, the arrogance, the viciousness, the condescending superiority in which uh, just a, it's just a disgusting, it's just a horrible, horrible underworld that does not get talked about. Nobody, maybe occasionally some novel, but nobody, this is the area that is most difficult and most impossible and you never hear talk about. Not a single politician wants to, have you ever heard a politician say, we aim to lower the prison population in the country. We don't want to see so many people get arrested. We want to see our prison population go down. People are like, are, and it, it, it permeates into the culture, and so uh, the culture and society produces our leaders, and so you get leaders that are an extension of of, of this trauma concentrated in, in, in a fewer number of people who simply, they seem like they're confident, they're rich, they're powerful, but when it comes to talking about the police, oops, there is the shadow of this trauma that millions of Americans millions of Americans are not aware of, are afraid to talk about, nobody will write about, no, nobody will make an issue. We'll talk about education, the medical sector, we'll talk about finances, economy, uh, inequality in society, unemployment, homelessness, but nobody is a, nobody wants to talk about the thousands, two, three thousand how many there may be, we know it's a number that is not uh, in the hundreds. We know that it's a number in the thousands of innocent, wrongfully accused people tormented, given years in jail. No, but the, the reality of live, being in jail, knowing that you didn't do it, it's, it's so traumatizing. It will ruin a mind because tra psychologically, it's like the world is somehow sinisterly, almost science fiction wise, like uh, strangely conspiring to, because that's what it seems like. Government institution is so big that to see a whole judicial system, a whole country, 
a whole population of people that have decided you're guilty and nobody's listening to you saying it wasn't me will cause a devastating catastrophic trauma to people and there's thousands of people in jail we know this the police know it not to mention the innocence project knows it governors politicians know it yet nobody will say anything nobody will say we got to create something to find these people that are innocent to see the excessive brutal sentences for things that don't warrant 10 or 15 years in jail but maybe a few months instead we want to find those people nobody wants to say that i ask you why doesn't anybody want to bring it up the only reason people don't bring things up usually in a situation where they ought to and they must is because they're afraid of something and how did that fear occur who causes that fear is it the president it's not the president it's most likely the person that wields the gun in their holster okay all right that's my two cents